Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained. My name is Richard, uh, as many of you probably know already, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about something that I just became aware of, and, and really quite shockingly so, uh, that S September is Sumerian September commemoration of Robert E. Howard's stories, uh, whether they be short stories, novellas, long stories, uh, novels, and, uh, and poems and fragments and such. Uh, everything that Robert E. Howard himself wrote of Conan of Samaria. And so uh, this is the first time I heard about it. Uh, much thanks to uh, Crafty Matt, uh, who came across my Twitter feed uh, that this is a thing. And then I looked uh, to see um, where it really came from and how long it's been going around. And uh, one of the earliest indicators I found uh, was from a channel that I already follow, and I'm going to feature that at the end of this uh, at the end of this video. This is an introductory video because I will be commemorating uh, Sumerian September throughout the rest of the month. Uh, I will do a uh, video, whether it be a, uh, a synopsis of what I had read uh, for that day or listen to, and I'm going to get into the sources that I will be using for this entire month. Um, really looking forward to this. I expect to put up a video every single day uh, talking about uh, Sumerian September. And um, I think it'll be a much better use of my time than the RPG a day uh, through the month of August, which I kind of abandoned because um, there's not very much interest in it, number one. And uh, I've seen fewer and fewer channels actually doing it. So hopefully um, this can spur on uh, some engagement and, and other channels will start picking it up as well. Uh, because uh, Robert E. Howard is, is one of the foundation, foundational authors to the tabletop role-playing game genre. I, I mean, you, you just like... J.R.R. Tolkien, you cannot separate Robert E. Howard from it either. Uh, and so uh, I think it's really, really important to continue to honor Robert E. Howard and uh, particularly to honor uh, some of his most iconic characters that, uh, that he had created and that nearly a hundred years later, we are still reading and celebrating and, and, and whatnot uh, through multitude of media. I mean, um, Conan is in literature, obviously, and in movies and in video games and in comic books and in um, uh, strategy, wargaming, and uh, is in bobbleheads and Funko Pops and, and all kinds of uh, memorabilia and toys and board games and whatnot. So, I mean, just every facet of, um, of entertainment culture uh, that you can think of. Uh, Conan the Barbarian or Conan the Sumerian uh, plays a very prominent role. Um, certainly, a, over, the, over the span of all of these many, many decades and, and again, the different medium, um, a multi-billion dollar uh, franchise or IP. So without further ado, I am going to switch views here and uh, let's talk about the sources that I will be using for this year. So in, in my not so humble opinion, I am going to make a declarative statement here um, that the Conan stories from Del Rey books are the original writings of Robert E. Howard. And uh, so they have not been altered, you know, uh, as were the Gnome Press in the 1950s or um, transformed in any ways by, um, you know, Elsbrog the Camp and, and Lynn Carter uh, later on for the pastiche books and, and certainly not um, tainted with, I'm not even going to say tempered, tainted with 
uh, modern, you know, modern eyes and modern, modern um, sensitivities, let's say. So if you want to get the purest form of Robert E. Howard's Conan the Sumerian stories and get them in the order in which he had written them, then this series of books, Conan the Sumerian, The Coming of Conan, The Conquering Sword of Conan, followed by The Bloody Crown of Conan. So, um, although I always get these two backwards uh, sometimes. So let me double check and make sure that this is in fact the, um, the last of them. The Coming of Conan, The Bloody Crown, and The Conquering Sword. So The Conquering Sword is the last. So that's, just wanted to make sure of that. So anyway, so these will be my sources and I'm gonna start with The Coming of Conan. And the way that I can handle the novellas that are in this, all right, because some of the stories, like I will go through this here, uh, some of the stories are long. And uh, when I say long, they're, they're really novellas. So I will start uh, with a, a video later on today, uh, just reading Samaria. And that's a poem, so that's a one-shot. Uh, the Phoenix on the Sword, however, is a story that is about 24 pages long. So I can certainly read that in one sitting, and that will be the following day. Uh, the Frost Giant's Daughter is 10 pages. Again, one day shot. Um, the God in the Bowl is about 20 pages, so I can definitely do that in one day. The uh, Elephant, uh, the Tower of the Elephant is, uh, let's say, one plus another, about 25 pages, so easily done. The Queen of the Black Coast is about 30 or so, easily done. The Iron Shadows and the Moon is uh, pushing about 42 pages, so easily done in one day. The Rogues in the House is a little over 30, and The Devil in Iron is about 30 pages as well. Most of the stories that I'm going to cover in this will be daily one-shots. When I get to the next book, The Bloody Crown, this book has the... Um, this book has The People of the Black Circle, which is about 80 pages long. Now, I could certainly sit down and read this in one day, but um, once I start working, that's going to be an impossibility. Um, just won't have the time, but I do have the audiobooks. And so on my commute, driving into work and, and back from work, I will be using the audiobook uh, to listen to that story for that day and start going. Uh, and then when I get back home, then I can do a really quick video and just talk about it from that, uh, you know, from that perspective, having listened to it that same day, and then just talking about the story and responding to it. So I will be doing one short story or novella every single day, uh, or at least attempting to. And uh, throughout the entire month of September, I will try to get through at least 31, uh, 31 short stories, poems, or, or whatnot um, through the month. And then I'll be looking forward to next year and starting off with some other Robert E. Howard, again, centric Robert E. Howard written stories. Uh, now, once I'm done with Conan, although I think that I'll probably have at least 60 that he had written, whether it be fragments or drafts or whatnot. Um, but if I do in the following year run, uh, run short on Robert E. Howard Conan material, then I will shift to a different character for that month. So, um, or the pastiches if I need to, just the, the really well-written ones. Uh, so, or the comic books as well. So I may go to some of the Conan comic books and use those instead, which I have the full run of the original Marvel comics starting in 1970. So I can go through those and that gives me more than enough for several years worth of, 
of Conan the Sumerian for Sumerian September. So without further ado, I want to shift over now to a website that I want to draw your attention to because this website and this gentleman is phenomenal for anything Robert E. Howard and, uh, and in particular Conan of Samaria. Oh, I got to switch here. Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome to Stately Vaughn Manor. And welcome to Sumerian September. Hello, my friends. It's time at last for Sumerian September. Roger and I are very excited. So we are just here in this short little video to welcome you to join us in reading this month every single Conan story written by the great Robert E. Howard. You can find them in this volume. This is the Complete Chronicles of Conan by Robert E. Howard from Galantz. Or you can read what I'm reading, which is the three-volume set of Conan the Sumerian from Del Rey. I, I have started this morning reading this, uh, The Coming of Conan the Sumerian, which is volume one, having a great time as I knew I would, and I hope all of you will as well. Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Sumerian, a very interesting character. And if you only know Conan from the films, as many people seem to do, you will be surprised. This character is an interesting character. Barbaric, yes, but also a very intelligent character who knew his business, and his business was war and conquest and some other things. He has plenty of adventures in the prehistoric Hyborian Age. They're fantastic. No one could write like Robert E. Howard, so I think you will have a great time with these stories. So, welcome to Sumerian September. And so there you have it, uh, you know, straight from the source there. I, uh, I will link his channel in the, uh, in the description as well. And, uh, and I also believe I either have his channel as a featured channel on, uh, on my channel. Uh, if not, I will certainly make it a featured channel on my channel so that you can always, when you're visiting my channel, you can pop over and, uh, and check it out. So really excited about this. Uh, so much more excited about this than RPG Day. And uh, I hope you enjoy these as well. You all have a great rest of your uh, weekend, holiday weekend, Labor Day weekend. And as always, I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen or at a convention uh, sometime soon. Um, very apropos to this is that um, a few of the Shadow Dark games that I am running, uh, game sessions that I'm running at conventions are set in the Hyborian Age. So uh, really, really uh, pairs up well. And uh, this is the month of September and my first one is going to be at ShireCon uh, near the end of the month, September 27th and 28th. And uh, really excited about that. And I will in fact be running, um, I will in fact be running my own adventure that I had written set in the Hyborian Age called Shards of Ymir. And uh, it was originally a Conan 2D20 uh, adventure that I then uh, converted over to Shadow Dark. So uh, that will be at the end of this month and a great, really great way of wrapping up. And maybe I will save the Frost Giant's Daughter for that very weekend uh, to talk about the story of the Frost Giant's Daughter which will have a connection to uh, the adventure that I'm actually running. So you all have a great one and take care.